everybody. I am Annika and uh, I'll come to you from Sweden and I am your relative. I hope you have a good time together and uh, I hope that you will find a comfortable chair or sofa but uh, don't fall asleep because I'm gonna take you on a little trip to Sweden now. I hope you will uh, understand my swinglish. I think you do. You are very clever persons. My mom was Ulla Britt and she was your second cousin. Uh, on the other si our side we have had one more generation than you. Because I think Tekla started family earlier than uh, Emil did. And uh, that's the reason. Uh, I have some pictures. Yes, my grandmother was Julia. And she's sitting here behind me. And uh, she was born 1896 and died 1980. When she became 80 years old, she had a big party. And... Uh, here you can see her and her siblings, the brothers Ivan, Manne and Helmer, and her sister Helga, who was also called Lisa. Their oldest sister Elsa didn't, uh, she was dead at the time. 1976 was this. And I have another photo here with. Uh, my mother and her sisters and uh, grandma, Julia. My grandfather was married twice. Her, his first uh, wife died. So I don't think I try to. Uh. <laughs> so uh, Paul Eskil and Birgit was from his uh, first marriage. But uh, Kerstin, Rune, my mother, Ulla Britt, uh, Gunnar, and Gudrun is your second cousins. The only one who is alive now is uh, is Gunnar. He is uh, 91 years old. He was born 1933. And they have a lot of children. So you have many relatives here in Sweden. Uh, I'm going to take you on a little journey now. And here it starts. Let's first talk a little bit about Emil's parents, Sofia and Petrus. Sofia was born 1834 and grew up in Västergötland. It's not the same part of Sweden as uh, Emil then was born. Uh, we have a long lake called Vettern and Västergötland is west. Väster is west of this lake and Östergötland Öster is east. East Götland is on the east side of uh, Vätten. So now you know a little bit about this. Sofias parents was Anders and Kristina and they got nine children. And I'm going to write them here. <laughs> Josef was born 1828, but he only became two months old. Magdalena was born 1829. Kaisa 1832. Another Josef. It was common that they used uh, the name again from the dead child. 
This Joseph also only became two months old. And then Sophia, 1834. Augusta, 1836. Anders Johan, 1839. Matilda, 1845. And Klaus, 1849. But the mother Christina died in fever 1853 when she was only 42 years old. At that time Matilda was only 8 years and Klaus was only 3 years old. The older children they uh, had to leave home early and start to work as servants in different places. In January 1855 Kaisa was 23 years old and she died in smallpox. Some months later that year, Magdalena, Sofia, Augusta and Anders Johan decided to make a longer journey to find work in Östergötland. Now I am at Göta Kanal, Göta Kanal and at the place where there are seven locks uh, called Bergs, Slussar, Bergs locks. And uh, this canal was built through Sweden down to Göteborg. And I'm going to show you on the back here. Göta canal was uh, built from the Baltic Sea. Here. There is the city of the shopping. Here is Cannon. There is the lake Roxen. And now we are somewhere here, just west of the lake in Bergs Locks. And the Shannon Road's going here through another small lake and to this big lake, Letten. And I now live here. So the boats were going through the canal, over Vettern, and then on the other side it was a canal again, there is one lake, and then it was going to this bigger lake, Vänern, and then through the river here, down to Göteborg, Gothenburg. And from Sofia, she lived in the area here somewhere. Uh, just before she went to uh, Bjarka Sebi, she was having an employment here. So I guess that she went by boat north at Vettern and then into the canal and to this place. That is locks. I think that Sofia came here going by boat from the other side of the Lake Vetten and here started a new chapter in her life where she should meet a lot of new people, listen to other dialects and get married and having a family. And here in Östergötland, Emil was born. This is uh, Bjerka Sebi Castle. It's called the New Castle, even though it was built and it was ready around uh, 1800. <laughs> so it's more than 200 years old. But there is still an older castle on the other side of the road, in another style. And I think that one is from the six, uh, 1600, the 17th century. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1986, a man called Oscar Ekman bought this castle. And all the area around, with all the cottages and Smaller farms. The year so uh, 1980, 
this the new castle and the park around it was um, donated to a church in the city Linköping and they still owe it but the Ekman family is owing the old castle and yeah the, the big area around Sofia Emil's mother came here from another part of Sweden. She moved here and uh, she became a servant. And I'm not sure if she was working in the castle or in some other thing here around. Uh, this is on, not only, was not only a castle, it also was a big farm. And uh, you're gonna see the farm buildings too. There was a diary and there was also a farming school. <laughs> so there was a lot of people working around this. I think it could be uh, several of hundred people are working in different ways around this farm, Bjarka Sebi. In the church books it's called Sebi only. Uh, but there are many Serbi in Sweden. So uh, the Ekman family decided to call it Bjarka Serbi. So it's like two words putting together. And that makes the difference from other Serbis in, in Sweden. So now they had come to Östergötland with the boat. And they went with horse and wagon south about uh, 35 or 40 kilometers to Bjerka Sebi. And Bjerka Sebi is in the Vist parish. Next year, 1856, Anders, the father of the siblings, decided that he and the two youngest uh, children also would go to Östergötland, working on a farm, but in the other part of uh, this area, uh, in the north of Östergötland, uh, on a place called Torby. And uh, his children Magdalena and Anders Johan, who was in Bjarka Sebi in West Parish, they decided to also go to Torby and be together with their daddy, and the youngest sisters, uh, siblings. They thought it should be so, but the church book says that Anders and the small children got their certificate of moving from their priest in their home parish, 16th November 1856. But the same, same day in Torby, the church book there says that Magdalena dies in cholera typhus. And there about her, the church book says, she was daughter of the recently dead Anders Jonasson. We don't know where Anders, her daddy, where he died or how he died, because we can't find him in any church book. He was like between the different places and so sad. I think the youngest ones, Matilda and Klaas, stayed in Västergötland, maybe together with relatives. I have not found them during these years yet. But later when they were older, they also came to Östergötland and uh, came to the same area there Sofia was. Four years, uh, three years later, 1859, Sofia's brother, Anders Johan, who had been for a year in Torby, he is back in West Parish, but he was sick. And he died only 20 years old in a breast sickness. More sorrows. But life's, life goes on. Sofia got to know Petrus Pettersson. Who was he? 
Let's look at his parents, parents first. His father was also called Petrus Nilsson. He married Annika, also called Anna, and they got Inga, 1816, Nils Gustav, 1819, Sofia and Katarina, 1822. There was twins. Carl Magnus, 1824, but he died only some months old. Another Carl Magnus and Katarina, 1826. One more pair of twins. At that time, uh, Anna died when they, the last twins were born. She died when she gave birth. And Petrus was alone with all the children. But in his home also his mother-in-law was living with them. And also his sister-in-law, Anna's sister, Eva-Lena. And Petrus needed a mother for the children. And he asked Eva-Lena to marry him. That was okay for her. But it was not that easy. Because she was his sister-in-law, they had to get special permission for marriage, even though they were not related by blood. But they married, and Eva-Lena also got many children. Anders Peter, uh, 1828, but he died early. Petrus and Anders, 18. 30 twins, but they also died. And our Petrus, Sophia's husband, 1831. Anna Helena, 1833. Christina, 1836. And Eva Charlotta, Eva Lotta called, 1840. So there was three pairs of twins. Hmm. And when Eva Lotta was mar married, she also she got nine children and among them there were two pair of twins. So there are many twins in this uh, family. My grandmother, Julia, was also a twin, but uh, her baby sister was still stillborn. And after that, I don't know any more twins in our family uh, here in Sweden. Maybe they are, but I don't know them. But I have seen that you have one pair of twins. The house in the background here is Serbi Bro, Serbi Bridge, and it also is a bridge here. Uh, it's a river going here. There lived Petrus and Sofia when they were getting married. I think there were but many people living in that house, so they maybe only had one room or something, a room and a fireplace. So it was a house for the workers uh, at Bjerka Sebi. From Sebi Bro, Sofia and Petrus moved to Munsmålen. Sometimes it's also called Munksmålen, but it's the same house. Back to uh, Sofia's siblings. <coughs> 1871. Sofia's sister Matilda died in smallpox. She was living in uh, Sofia and Pietro's home. And five years later, 1876, also Sofia's brother Klaus died in chronic pneumonia when he was 27 years old. Matilda was 20 when she died. So from all of all these siblings, only Sofia and Augusta married and got families.
Now let's take a walk to Mumsmålen. This is Mumsmålen where Emil was born. And I'm very glad to see that the owners, the family Ekman, is keeping the house is in a very good condition. I see it's new, newly painted and uh, restored uh, on the outside. Uh, most of the small cottages in this big area is summer houses. But I'm not sure if uh, there are some family renting it because it looks more like if um, they lend it out to um, scouts or something for a weekend or something like that. Uh, I don't know, I <laughs> just guess. <laughs> uh, so here Emil was born and he lived here almost all the time until he left Sweden. His parents, Petrus and Sofia, came here uh, when they were in the beginning of the marriage. They lived at another place just in the beginning. When uh, Petrus and Sofia were, were getting older, they, their daughter Tekla, my great-grandmother and her husband, was living here for some years. And I'm going to try to translate the contract, the, the paper which says uh, what Tekla's husband Lars August had to do for work for the whole year, just for living here. And uh, I, I make a try <laughs> to make a translation. It was a lot of work to do at the big garden, the, the big farm. Uh, they should um, deliver milk for the diary there and so on. So uh, we take a look. There are no people here now, so we take a little look. I guess this big stone was here all, also when Emil was a child. He maybe was climbing here on the stone. Children like to climb. There are some berry bushes. Let's see, it looks very nice. The house. Here is a little fireplace. I guess children of the leaders are using that. I have been here watching a couple of times before. The first time I was together with my grandmother and uh, one of my uncles. Um, it says the text over there. It says uh, dining hall, <laughs> dining room, and here the sign says sleeping hall, sleeping room, and this is kiosk for buying sweets, so I guess it is for camping. 
and here is a nice rose honey we call it honey rose the berry bushes here are black currant I think you call it as soon ready and here are some stones for the children to play where Emil was playing and I think he had to do a lot of work to to help his parents and this is a big apple tree I don't know how old it can be I don't have any pictures from um, small and any old picture so I don't know if it was there all the time but it's old but maybe not Maybe not 150 years, but it can be 100 years or 80 or something. On the back side, it's only one window. The railway here was not ready when uh, Emil left Sweden, but now it goes here uh, in that direction to the city in Shopping, and it is between Mumsmålen we visited and Mosshult. We now gonna uh, check up. When uh, Petrus and Sofia were getting older and they moved away from Mumsmålen, they uh, moved into this Mosshult and they stayed here the rest of their lives. Uh, Sofia died first and uh, Petrus later. And when, uh, when uh, Emil's sister Tekla and her family lived in Mumsmålen. Her husband Lars August were getting sick. He got problems with his kidneys and he couldn't work so hard anymore. And first they moved to uh, another cottage you're going to see soon, but I saw there were people there so I don't want to stay there so much and talk <laughs> and filming. Just, uh, I just make a little short if I can, maybe I can speak to the people there. But uh, they first lived there at Nydal. And I even have a photo from inside the cottage that's very uncommon during this time because there were no flashes. So we almost have pictures outdoors. But I have this picture with Lars August laying in her bed with her, his family around him. But when he died, I think two years after this picture, Tekla and the children moved also here to Mosult, where Petrus was still, still living and living. Live, he lived here and he was alive, yes. And, but he died, I think it was only one year later, he also died. So Tekla and her family, the six children, were living here. The daughters, the oldest daughters were getting older and moved away, but she uh, lived here. I'm gonna check the year she moved away. Um, and she got that help that she could work, clean the schoolhouse. As a widow, she got, got help to get some money in that way. But the Ekman family was also very nice to all the people who lived around here. And one day the old wife Ekman came here to Mosult visiting Tekla and the children. And um, Tekla was uh, weaving the material. And this wife 
widow wife Ekman asked, can I buy, buy that material when you are ready? Oh, Tekla said, oh yes, oh yes, ma'am. <laughs> and when um, the wife Ekman came and paid for the material, she gave it back to Tekla and say, now you shall make clothes for your children of this material. I think that's a very good story. And that was my grandmother, Julia, who told about it. So she remembered it. It looks also like a very nice house, Mosshult. And there are no people here, I don't know. No car. So maybe we can take a little look. The bushes here used to flower a lot earlier in the summer. And they are maybe old, and there is an old dead tree, I think it's an apple tree, who is dead. And uh, I have the picture of Tekla and the children sitting outside here. I think this was just that kind of cottage, cottage uh, where you could live when you don't had to work at the big farm. But you could have some animal here, I think. Maybe some chickens at least. And a pig. We often had a pig and some chickens. This is Nydal, New Valley. <laughs> In, in English, where Tekla and her family moved when Lars August were getting sick. I, don't, I think they lived only a couple of years here. And then they moved to Mosult. This is the big farming houses at Perkasebi. They were built 1874. They are very big. I don't know where Emil worked before he left Sweden, but maybe here. Maybe he had some work here. Here has been a midsummer celebration earlier this summer. The big pool with leaves and flowers are still there, but it's very brown now. Sofia and Petrus got seven children. Carl Alfred, who uh, only lived a few weeks, 1862. Ada, Ada, born 1863. She grew up and married, but when she got her first child, she died in childbirth. I think she is the one who is on these two pictures together with uh, at the first picture together with Sofia and Petrus and the other picture I think it is together with Tekla. The third child was Carl Henrik, but he also died early. Uh, he was born 1865 and he died 1867. And then was Tekla born, my great grandmother, 1869. And uh, Per Walfrid, 1872. 
and I have I have no contacts with that uh, branch of the family. And your grandpa Emil, 1875, and Beda, the youngest one, 1877. So two uh, sons died early and uh, Ada died also young, but her son, she, he sur survived and we had, when he had grown up, he also emigrated to USA. Emil was the only one of his uh, sisters and brothers who, um, who went to America. But um, he was not the only one in this area of Sweden that emigrated. I have a book here and it's called Emigrants from Vist, 1850-1930. And here is the map of, uh, of the parish. And this book says that 568 persons, including children, emigrated during these 80 years to USA. And this was only one parish in this area. I think north-south is about 15 kilometers and east-west is also about 15 kilometers. Maybe, more or less. But there are many more parishes in the area uh, where also I grew up. And it was the same from all parishes. A lot of people emigrated. Two of Emil's aunts Petrus' sisters, Christina and Sofia, had emigrated 1868 and 1869. These years were hard times in Sweden. There were uh, bad harvests. One year was very dry and one year was very wet. And there were very bad harvests. Uh, Christina and Sofia, they settled down in Swedona, in Mercer County, and Orion in Henry County, in Illinois. And together with a lot of other persons from this area. So they already knew a lot of them. And also, um, uh, Petrus' brother Carl Magnus had four children, all of his four children emigrated during the years 1878 to 1888. And they also came to Orion, Galesburg, Knoxville in Illinois. And as you know, Emil left Sweden 1895. And he also had another cousin, Augusta's uh, son, Carl Oscar Milton, he also emigrated in uh, 1893, it was two years before Emil, and he married in Cook in Illinois. So you have many relatives uh, around you that you maybe don't know. Uh, so you have to find them and uh, get in contact with them if you want to. Yes, it was a lot of names and uh, years and stories and um, there are many things to talk about, about uh, my family and Sweden, but we take that another time. If you want to, you can uh, be a part of a Facebook group that I have called Descendants of Sofia and Petrus Petterson and uh, I hope that you want to be with us there and I'll also try to get uh, a lot of your relatives uh, invited to this group and uh, 
then you can um, tell us who you are, your name and uh, who your parents are and so. <laughs> and I will do the same with my sisters and their children and my cousins and a lot of people. We are a big extended family, both in the uh, United States and here in Sweden. Have a good time um, this weekend and I hope that we will be, be in contact more during the days we are coming. Bye bye!